Coming up on this edition of Out of the Blue from Middle Tennessee State University. Applications are open for this year's STEM Summer Camp, a week-long outreach by the College of Basic and Applied Sciences for students in grades 9 through 12. They'll get a taste of biology, chemistry, math, science education, and more. The College of Education is bringing back to campus its master's degree program in instructional leadership. We tell you how this program will prepare teachers hoping to move into school administration. And we tell you about the fastest growing major in the Jones College of Business, our entrepreneur program, which prepares students for careers in business innovation. I'm Andrew Oppmann, and this is Out of the Blue. Welcome to Out of the Blue, I'm Andrew Ottman. Applications are open for this year's STEM Summer Camp, a week-long outreach by the College of Basic and Applied Sciences for students in grades nine through 12. Students will come to campus for a taste of biology, chemistry, math, science education, and more, plus interact with our professors. Joining to tell us about the camp is Heather Green, coordinator of our MTeach program, which works to prepare education majors for careers as science teachers. Heather, welcome back to the program. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. You know, I think the last time we spoke, it was during the pandemic, right? And we, we were talking from your living room. Yes. <laughs> so welcome to the studio for Out of the Blue. So you've got some happy news. We've seen some substantial growth in the STEM camps. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, we started our STEM camp last summer mm -hmm. and it was mainly science related. Um, but this year we have grown. So we've added about um, two times as many student slots as we had last year. And we've also added content areas. So not only are we doing biology and chemistry, but now we have math, science education, and engineering technology added to the camp. So let me back up a little bit and make sure all of our viewers, when I say STEM, mm -hmm. they should hear science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Correct. correct. And you're, of course, part of our College of Basic and Applied Sciences. That's where all these programs rest, right? Yes. So this is an opportunity for those students to see what we have to offer as a university. Yes, and it's an opportunity for them to come in and try it out. So one of the great things about MTSU is that our students in the College of Basic and Applied Sciences can be involved in research and involved in laboratories, not just sitting in classes listening to professors. So we're going to get them in and have them do hands-on activities in the lab, in the field, um, working with people like me who work as science educators. Um, so doing the things that we would have them do as undergraduate or even as graduate students at um, MTSU. It's a fantastic program and I got to see it up close last time, but even though we've expanded, there's still a limit, right? How many seats are available? Yes, we only have 90 seats available and it is first come first serve. Okay. Uh, we have already opened registration. Uh, early registration uh, ends April 15th of this month. Okay. And then registration completely ends either when we're full or May 15th, whichever comes first. So your best shot, be apply before April 15th. Yes, absolutely. The sooner the better. So tell me the criteria. Who are you looking forward to participate in this program? We're looking for upcoming ninth to 12th grade students who are interested in trying out science. They don't have to be wanting to be science majors. They might just have an interest in science mm -hmm. or math and want to try out and see what MTSU has to offer. Plus, they get to spend time in all of our facilities. And you've mentioned some of those, but the science building itself, actually going into the labs and seeing up close and actually taking part in some of those exercises, right? Yes, and we're also going to take them to some of the facilities that are outside of campus, uh, including our um, airport facilities, our creamery, possibly the dairy farm. Ooh, nice. Um, chocolate milk, maybe So they get to see our future. cows. <laughs> yeah, they get to see us make the chocolate milk, okay, which is okay. truly fun. Okay. Um, not as much fun as drinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they also get to go to the game room and our... Um, exercise facilities, mm -hmm, the rec so, center, the rec center. Like um, so lots of different 
chances to see different sides of campus. And I know with the biology programs, they'll even go out in the field. Nice, nice. So actual field trips, that's, yes. that's cool. And all the advantages of these camps is obviously just the opportunity to be on campus and imagine yourself in these facilities. All your faculty, well, most of your faculty will be participating in this, right? And they'll get to connect potentially with the professors if they come to MTSU, they'll, they'll take classes with, right? Yes, every session is led by an actual MTSU professor. And we will also have MTSU graduate students and undergraduate students helping with the sessions. So they'll be able to talk with our graduate and undergraduate students and find out what it's like to be a student at MTSU and also interact with our professors. Well, I, I can't let you leave the program without talking about MTeach for a little <laughs> bit. Tell our viewers what that is and you're the coordinator what are its goals and objectives? So MTeach is our math, science, and agriculture secondary education minor. Um, what, the way it is set up is that our students major in an area of math, science, or agriculture, and then they do the MTeach minor at the same time so that when they graduate, they have a major in their content area as well as their licensure to teach in the state of Tennessee. Um, the highlight of our program is early and often field experience. So we have them out in the classrooms teaching children from their very first class. Mm -hmm. And you were my daughter Emily's science teacher back at Central Magnet. So I know you understand the importance of preparing teachers for that environment, for the high schools, for the middle schools, for the elementary schools. What are you able to bring from your old job into this job at MTSU to help prepare our students to be those teachers? One of the things we do at MTeach is we teach the way that I already taught. So we teach our students to teach using inquiry methods. So they're getting the students thinking through the science problems, thinking through the math and trying it out themselves. So we're not just standing there lecturing to them. Mm -hmm. They're experiencing STEM, just like we are in the camp. It, we're all tying it back <laughs> together, aren't it we? It all goes so together. So that's maybe why you're connected with the camp. That's really good. So we've got to go through this one more time, the in-person camp. 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. June 19th through the 23rd, right here on the campus of MTSU. Everything starts here, we'll go to and from here. And where do I go on the web to find out more? Yes, it's mtsu.edu slash STEM camp. And what will I find there? They're gonna find the registration form that they'll fill out. They'll be able to choose which sessions they're most interested in. And then of course, pay the fee. It is $200 until April 15th and $250 after April 15th. 90 seats available and a great experience. So Heather, thank you for joining us to tell us all about this wonderful program. Thank you. And we'll be right back. I am True Blue. As a member of this diverse community, I am a valuable contributor to its progress and success. I am engaged in the life of this community. I'm a recipient and a giver. I am a listener and a speaker. I am honest in word and deed. I'm committed to reason, not violence. I am a learner. Now and forever. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. True Blue. Do you want more from your college experience? At Middle Tennessee State University, that's exactly what you get. More, more majors, more opportunities, more guaranteed scholarships. Up to $32,000 over four years. MTSU, Tennessee's University of Opportunities. The Jennings A. Jones College of Business at Middle Tennessee State University is the number one producer of business talent in the greater Nashville area. Our nationally ranked programs and state-of-the-art facilities offer a world-class education at an affordable price. The exclusive partnership of Jones College with Dale Carnegie Training Worldwide equips our graduates with the soft skills they need to succeed. Jones College of Business, it delivers an education for the real world. So many men and women that have served, that expected to be able to have their tuition or certain assistance being given to them, and that money evaporated. With the establishment of the general fund is to make sure that all those men and women can get through MTSU and pursue what they thought they could do when they came on back. We're extremely proud that the Predators have identified the need to help make this fund one of the best at our university for our veterans. Welcome back to Out of the Blue. I'm Andrew Ottman. 
The College of Education is bringing back to campus its master's degree program in instructional leadership to better prepare teachers hoping to move into school administration. We chat with Dr. Donald Sneed, chair of the Womack Educational Leadership Department, about the effort. Dr. Sneed, welcome to the program. Thank you. We're glad to have you here in the Center for Educational Media. It's part of the College of Education. And exciting news about your program, the Master of Instructional Leadership returning to campus starting in the summer. Can you tell us about that? Well, um, the Instructional Leadership MED program is not necessarily a new program. It's just that for the past 10 years or so, we've had off-campus cohorts. But those areas, mostly rural areas uh, throughout Tennessee, uh, has dried up. We've had a lot of interest in having a program back on campus to train educators to become education leaders. Mm -hmm. And so this summer we are um, beginning, well, we're starting over. We are bringing back a program on campus, face-to-face. Mm -hmm. -face. It's a hybrid program. Nonetheless, it will be housed here on the MTSU main campus to train educators to become education leaders and become leaders in public schools throughout the state and other places they wish to be employed. Well, you know, we've always innovated and created great programs in the College of Education, and I'm certain this is another one in that tradition. Talk to me about this is an ability not to only earn my master's, but also my instructional leadership license. Well, um, again, you know, you're right. Learn, earning a master's is just, I guess, something we do. However, to add the uh, endorsement for leadership. Now, you know, Tennessee has certain standards for education leaders, uh, and all states have certain standards. So we have to make sure that this program um, adhere to those um, guidelines mm -hmm. and to those uh, benchmarks. And, and that's one of the things that we are, we are finishing up now. And that's one of the greatest challenges to make sure that the um, standards that the Tennessee um, set in other states are, uh, are met in the courses that we offered. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's exciting, but it's, it's challenging. It is. But we're looking forward to it. And we've had a number of, of people who have inquired about this program. And that's one of the reasons we're bringing it back on campus, because I think we have a local market for it. And obviously, this is geared towards the working professional who's seeking this credential to become a leader. I, I'm seeing your program of study here, and it, it, it looks like it's broken out by about five semesters, two per course if you follow along the path. And you mentioned this is hybrid because some of these will be in person and some will be online. Does that help the working professional s sort of accommodate how they're going to be able to fit all of this in their schedule? Yeah, I think it, it does. Um, I think uh, students have an option. Mm -hmm. Well, not necessarily an option of either, but I think with the idea they have both. They have some online experiences, they also have face-to-face. -face. I think it balances out. Mm -hmm. And as you know, online eat learning now, it's the thing. It is. And so um, we're trying to keep up with um, what uh, attracts students, and we're trying to keep up what uh, um, help kids, get, help students get through the program. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, this is a five semester program, it seems like a long time, but I think with working professionals and spreading it out over this length of time will give them time to be successful in completing it. You know, as, a, as an online adult learner myself in the College of Education, I can tell you that this pacing really works if you've got a full-time job and you're trying to balance both the program of study and this. But there's also an eligibility requirement, right? What must I have to apply for this program? Well, in order to enter the instructional leadership component, you have to have three years of public school teaching. Okay. So that is a state requirement. So we cannot admit you unless you meet that requirement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you can get into another master's program without it, but you have to be, you have to have three years of experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that's um, reasonable because, you know, if you're going to lead, you need to know what it's all about. Absolutely. And who you're leading. Absolutely. And we could go online to find the description of all these courses, but Take the 50,000 foot view for me a bit and tell me what do I get from this program once, once it's all concluded? What will be the thing that will help me get the most for taking this? You know, I think the most important thing about instructional leadership is how you best uh, lead a school to mm -hmm. meet its objectives and its goals. How you best can lead a school uh, to make students successful, to make teachers successful, to make the district successful. 
So these courses in our curriculum is designed to train um, leaders how to be very effective in those areas. Areas of curriculum, areas of finance, areas of uh, community and school relations, and in pretty much any area that involves education in a particular school in a district. I, mm -hmm. I think our program is very well designed mm -hmm. to help those individuals um, develop the skills and the knowledge necessary to meet those goals. Educational leadership has long been a part of the College of Education. You're the chair of the Womack Educational Leadership Department, and I know that's been a pride point for us for many years. Talk to us about your department as a whole and the type of efforts, including this, that you're trying to accomplish in the College of Education. Well, as a whole, you know, we train teachers. As a whole, we, now we're training leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, um, as a whole, we train people to become um, more in-depth in their knowledge and understanding of the principles and the concepts that actually support learning. Um, we have, a, I think, a great faculty, mm -hmm. and all of our faculty in one way or another is involved in this process. Mm. Uh, it's not isolated to a few, but we have contributions from all of our faculty. And uh, while all the faculty may or may not uh, teach these courses, they are very supportive in one way or another. So I think, you know, that's one of the things I'm proud of. Mm -hmm. We have a faculty that works together as a whole to make uh, our program successful. We were talking a little bit off camera and you made this great definitive comment about teaching, that it's alive and well and vibrant. Explain that to us, uh, how there's still optimism and how programs like this are helping people prepare for a fantastic career. We get a lot of negative when it comes to teaching and, and school, but uh, first of all, we know they're very vital and necessary. Mm -hmm. um, I think we prepare um, leaders, we prepare teachers, to meet those challenges. You know, there are, there are serious challenges when it comes to teaching and learning, but um, the profession is not dead, it's not gonna die. It, it, is, it is very much needed. Uh, the teaching pool is probably the largest, or one of the largest employment pool in the country. Mm -hmm. So um, I was listening to a, uh, yesterday in uh, um, another district in Texas, how they travel to Mississippi and other areas recruiting teachers. So, and I smile because it reminded me, oh yeah, we have a market for the mm -hmm. people that we are producing. So it's not just locally, it is nationwide. The College of Education talks about how the students make a difference. Let's close on this. Yes. How can you make a difference through teaching? We are different makers. I, I have 22 years of teaching experience in the public schools and you make a difference in the lives of students. You change students' lives, you give them perspective on life, you give them something to look for, to hope for, you give them aspirations, you motivate them to become productive citizens. So we are uh, different makers. Mm -hmm. We touch lives, we change lives, we empower people to become what the best they can be, whatever that is. That's what we do, so we are different makers. Dr. Sneed, thank you for joining us, and I know we could go to your website mtsu.edu slash education for more information. That is correct. Thank you for this program and all the work you're doing to bring it back to campus. Thank you so much. And we'll be right back.
Jennings A. Jones College of Business at Middle Tennessee State University is the number one producer of business talent in the greater Nashville area. Our nationally ranked programs and state-of-the-art facilities offer a world-class education at an affordable price. The exclusive partnership of Jones College with Dale Carnegie Training Worldwide equips our graduates with the soft skills they need to succeed. Jones College of Business, it delivers an education for the real world. Welcome back to Out of the Blue, I'm Andrew Oppmann. The fastest growing undergraduate major in the Jones College of Business is our Business Innovation and Entrepreneurship Program. It enrolled a record setting 82 freshmen this fall and this cross-disciplinary major prepares students for careers in business innovation. It's earned national recognition. Joining to talk to us about it is Dr. Joshua Aaron, holder of the Pam Wright Chair for Entrepreneurship. Dr. Aaron, welcome to the program. Thank you. You've got a big story to tell, and I want to give you plenty of time to tell it, but let's start with the growth of the entrepreneur program itself. It's a pride point of the university, a pride point for the Jones College of Business. Talk about how it's the fastest growing major in the college. Yeah, if you go back to uh, fall of, of 2020, we had 112, then we went up to 156, and then up to 196 this past fall of 22. It's been phenomenal growth. We're, we're very pleased with it. I really think it's been the culmination of three things that have kind of triangulated. Mm -hmm. One of them is that there's a general sense of an entrepreneurial spirit in the, in the culture today, right? I think we're benefiting from that. Also, we changed the name of the program to Business Innovation and Entrepreneurship in fall of 2020. And so I think that's been able to get us a little bit more notoriety. Um, parents like that a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Employers like that a little bit better that you're teaching the innovative mindset that might be applied either in the student's new business or in their place of business, mm -hmm. uh, whatever might be the case. And then third, you know, we have a, we have a couple of really really great benefactors to the program. One of them is, is Pam Wright, who has been a benefactor for entrepreneurship for, for a long time and, and currently sits on the board. And recently, uh, Chuck McDowell has come along and provides us with operational expenses each and every year. And so that's enabled us to drastically grow the prize pool in the business plan competition, mm -hmm. to fund other uh, competitions inside of the classroom that we can give smaller uh, stipends to student winners of different uh, different programs that we have inside the classroom. All of that just creates a buzz and gets the positive momentum rolling. Let's step back a bit and give me the elevator speech for your program. What are the things that you teach and how will it help me if I'm a student, if I'm seeking those kind of advantages? Well, we're going to take a student who has an idea or just has an entrepreneurial mindset. Mm -hmm. And we're going to enable them to either take the idea that they already have and hone it and craft it into a marketable business. Or we're going to take the mindset that they have, give them the tools to maybe think about three or four different businesses that they don't come to the table with a business idea and determine whether entrepreneurship is the path that they want to pursue. At the end of the program, if they choose that entrepreneurship is not the path that they're going to choose, then they still have a very marketable degree with the business innovation aspect of that degree that they can go apply in the, in the, in the corporate world. Wow. And, and of course, with this, you've mentioned practical experience, internships. I know that's a core tenet of the Jones College. Talk about how that's important to your program. It's, it's a, 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 a keystone to our program. Right now, all of our graduates come out with an internship. Um, and, and have done so for many years. We are currently um, doing a pilot program. We have another uh, benefactor who has given us some seed money to come up with a pilot mentorship program. I'm hoping that eventually it grows into a mentors academy. So the students will ultimately be given the opportunity to choose which path they want to go, either the mm. internship path or the ment mentorship path. If they choose mentorship, they're going to be matched with a, with a mentor and mentee relationship in a speed dating type of situation, day one of class, and then they're going to be mentored throughout the entire course of the semester. And then at the end, they give a presentation on what all they've learned and how much they've grown over the past 15 weeks. Wow. Wow. The competitiveness of the program, you've got competitions within the program itself, and they pay some money, some prizes. Why is that important? Well, it's important, I think, because A, it gets, it gets the attention of the students, but it's also important because, you know, in, in the, in the, finals of the business plan competition coming up, we're going to award $9,000 to the winning, the winning 
venture. Mm -hmm. So that's legitimate money to help them to help them grow. We're going to give away roughly thirty thousand dollars in total prize money for that competition. And when students hear that, when you're able to go into a classroom and, and recruit to that, it gets their attention and makes them not only interested in participating, but taking it very seriously. Mm -hmm. And the extent to which they take it seriously, you get you you get out what you put in, right? So so the the advice and the mentorship that they get from the judges that they're going to interact with throughout the course of the competition is going to be so much better since they've put more effort into the competition. Right, right. I mean, it's a brilliant concept. It really gets the adrenaline pumping in all of these situations, and they learn from that. So you've been engaged in something fairly recently that has also showcased our students. Can you talk about that? Well, every spring we have this business plan competition, as I, as I described. So at the end of February, we get 50 to 60 new venture profiles. We judge those internally with faculty members and whittle those down to a top 20 or 25 students. Mm -hmm. And then in late March, have the semifinal trade show elevator pitch where they set up displays, but they're also called in one by one to go give their three minute elevator pitch in front of the judges. And so in the semifinal round, we cut from 20 down to six. And so then at the end of April, we come back in the parliamentary room, make a big deal about it, have 15 judges, have these students giving 15 minute um, more business plan presentations now with a big 15 minute Q&A. So it really is a, a, a top notch event. It feels very professional mm -hmm. and they're competing for very serious um, cash support for their businesses. That's, that's, that's really a lot of fun and a lot of learning. And you've received some national recognition for the program. Give us some of those details. Absolutely. We were, we were awarded the 2022 Showcase Award by the Small Business Institute, which mm -hmm. goes to their program of the year. Wow, that's fantastic recognition. And I know Dean Urban is always talking about the Jones College and that it gets national recognition and distinction. You're not resting on your laurels, though. You've got some things ahead. Talk about those. The future of the program is bright. I mean, we brought in um, a, a record 82 freshmen last fall. I'm expecting that to be even higher this year. Um, but some of the ways that we're trying to do that, for example, we've, we've had a high school fair now for eight years. Um, Tracy Huddleston's been doing the Invention Convention for 30 years mm -hmm. on this campus. Mm -hmm. And so she and I got together and said, you know, if we're, if we're going to have these entrepreneurs from cradle to grave, what we're missing, <laughs> you know, is the middle school fair. So we're going to launch a middle school fair in uh, spring of 2024 nice. and have um, faculty members in the College of Business and the College of Education that are helping us do that. So that, that's something that's very exciting. Dr. Joshua Aaron, holder of the Pam Wright Chair for Entrepreneurship. It's an honor having you on the program and congratulations for everything you're doing for the university. Thank you. And this does wrap up this edition of Out of the Blue. A reminder, you can find information about the campus 24 hours a day by going to our website, mtsunews.com. You can also find additional special content on our social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Broadcasting from the Center for Educational Media, I'm Andrew Ottman. Stay safe, stay on course, and remain true blue.